look at it. It says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. So as you go about, as you go about, remember, he says that he shall see his seed and he shall prolong his days. You are the one through whom God prolongs the days of Jesus Christ. Because we are here on earth, Jesus' days are prolonged. Can you imagine? You are the glory that comes after his suffering. Be confident. Tell anybody, be confident. Be confident. Tell anybody, enough, enough. Of, feeling of feeling sorry for yourself. Enough, enough. of feeling like you are nothing. God thinks that you are something. Yeah. I will never be defeated in my life. Was Jesus ever defeated in his life? Jesus was a success. He was a success. Even in death. You know, do you know, do you know, one of the most sublime miracles and powers of Christ that was displayed was displayed on the cross. Why was he hung on the cross? You know, when, when someone is crucified on the cross, it took 15 hours for the person to die. 15 long hours for the person to die. After six hours, Jesus died. The centurion could not believe it. And you know how Jesus died? Jesus gave up the ghost. Jesus gave up the ghost. Nobody killed him. He gave up the ghost. The Bible says he breathed and said it is finished. And sighed and that was the end. When the centurion saw it and saw all that had happened, the skies became dark. The whole place became dark from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. The whole place became dark. When he died, the rocks were rent. There was earthquake all over the place. When the centurion who was, who was the one in charge of the crucifixion saw all that was done, he said, truly, this is the son of God. This is the son of God. This is truly the son of God. When he came back from the dead, whilst he was talking to his disciples on that day, he led, Bible says he led them out of Galilee. And when he stood before them and was talking, right before their eyes, he started levitating. Right before their eyes. His own brothers had been, were there. His brothers did not believe it. He did not, did not believe him when he was walking around. They were born from the same womb. They knew him. They ate Gary with him. They played soccer with him. They did all of that with him. And then all of a sudden he came to come and say that, I am the son of God. I am from above. Ye are from beneath. The Bible says, the Bible says they could not believe it. What is wrong with you? Jesus spoke with boldness. He spoke with confidence. He spoke knowing who was in him. Yeah, he did. He did. There was no sense of uncertainty with him. Check Jesus' words in John. The reason why you must read the book of John is to know how Jesus spoke. Yeah. It's to know how he spoke. How he spoke. He spoke with so much assurance. So much confidence. No shadow of doubt. God, that's how God wants you to talk. Because Jesus said, you see, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now Jesus, who is the only begotten son of God, so loved the world that he sent you. Are you in the church? Yeah. I said God so loved the world that he gave. He sent his only begotten son. When his only begotten son came, he also so loved the world that he sent you and me to the world to display God. No man has ever seen the father. It is only the son who has declared him. He's the one who has made him known. We are the ones to make God known. In our classrooms. Make God known in the bank. Make God known in the hospital. Make God known in that school. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So be confident. Tell the other neighbor, be confident. Be confident. Tell the other neighbor, be confident. Be confident. Talk big. Talk Tell the neighbor, talk big. Talk big. Tell the neighbor behind you, talk big. Talk big. <laughs> I'm big. See, I'm big. Nothing can stop your progress. Nothing. There's no demon hazard of hell that can stop your progress. Are you following what I'm sharing with you? It's so important that you catch these things. Yeah. He wants you to have confident assurance of conviction. 
of understanding concerning the mystery of Christ. It's called the mystery of God and the Father, which is Christ. Then it says, in Christ are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In Christ are hidden all the treasures of wisdom. That's another, another, day, another day's topic. In him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. You can't, you can't, you can't be bereft of information. No. Because it's inside you. I said the miracle worker is inside you. Look at Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14 verse 14. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them. And what did he do? And he healed their sick. He was moved with compassion. Jesus is the very embodiment of love. Jesus is the miracle worker. And the miracle worker is sitting inside you. He went about healing all that were sick and oppressed with the devil. If you read in Mark chapter 6, you know, from verse, I think, 35 or so, the Bible talks about how Jesus walked on water. The one who walked on water is sitting inside you. No matter the challenges of life, you will walk on those challenges. See, I'm blessed. So, it's, it's about knowing who is inside. That is why we read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If you have never read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, go and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are the most important books of the Bible. Because that is what shows you the life. Romans, Acts, Romans, and all of that shows you the life of God in a man. Or what Christ in man did. Or convinces you that Christ is inside you. But for you to know who it is that is inside you. Who is this one that is inside me? The life itself. It's in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Don't think that it is nothing. Those books are ancient books. Oh, we, let's read the Pauline epistle. The Pauline epistle helps you to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to find out who it is that is inside you. Who is this man? Who is this man? Who is this man inside me? Who is he? And that's what I'm showing you now. He's the greatest you can ever think about. Has your father walked on water before? There's nothing in your natural gene that can make you walk on water. It is only in your spiritual gene to make you walk on water. There's nothing from your father's bloodline that will make you successful. Our success is not dependent on the family we come from. People have come from big, huge families and have had problems. Have had trouble. They failed. But it's a family we belong in. It's a family of God. It's a family of Christ. That is where your success is from. Are you in the church? Yeah. yeah. Jesus was full of love. He was the very definition of love. The very definition of love. Greater love has no man than this. John chapter 15. Than that a man should lay down his life for his friends. Who would lay down his, his life for his friends? The Bible says that seldom for a righteous man, one will even think. Scarcely for a righteous man, will one dare to die. But Jesus said this. John 15, 30. He says, greater love has no man than this, than a man should lay down his life for his friends. And he laid down his life for his friends. When he, when they were, those who beat him, a large man tore his back. I mean, someone slaps you, 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 you will say something, innit? Just a slap may end up provoking something from you. Or provoke something from somebody. But Jesus was lashed. His back was torn. If you have watched Passion of the Christ, it's just one hundredth of what happened to Christ. They lashed him. The Bible says that he was mad. His visage was so mad that you could not record. He did not look like a man. He did not look like a human being. Yeah. That was how much they beat him. They spat on him. Lashed him on his back and turned his stomach and lashed the stomach too. Tell you. All for you. But whilst we're lashing him and doing all that to him, nailing him to the cross, look at Luke chapter, Luke chapter 23. Look at what he said. Verse 34. Luke 23, 34. Do you like my message? 
I think I've preached for a long time, isn't it? Look at this. Then said Jesus. Look at this. Then said Jesus. Father, forgive them. Who can do this? You know, have you heard of the Chinese Jesus? <laughs> they lashed him and did everything to him and he hung on the cross. As he was hanging on the cross, the people were mocking him. And that was what pained him. I mean, he could not bear. You know, you can take the lashes, you can do some things, but then when they are mocking at you, the temptation of Jesus at the beginning of his life, his ministry, was if you be the son of God, change the stone to bread. If you are the son of God. At the last hour, the same temptation came. If you are the son of God, come down from the tree. And they were mocking him. He said he was, he, he, he's the son of God. Let him come down. He saved others. Let him save himself and let's see. Ah, when he said, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani, they said, ah, he's calling on to God. Let's see what God will do for him. The Chinese Jesus could not bear it. <laughs> As we were talking like that, he got down off the cross. <laughs> hey! And he just, ah! Ah! he beat everybody and went back to the cross and died. <laughs> wow. Only in China, I tell you. But look at Jesus. He stayed on the cross. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. The one who is the very definition of love is sitting inside you. Meaning that now you can demonstrate love. You know the same thing happened to Philip, to Stephen rather. When Stephen was being stoned, he also said, lay not this to their charge. That's what Philip said, Stephen said. Why? Because he was so conscious of the fact that Christ was in him. And Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus stood up in the heavens. He stood up in the heavens, clapping for him. This is my son. He has lived. The greater one who is inside you is the very embodiment of love. Say, I love always. Say it again, I love always. I love always. Yeah. When Jesus, Bible says he was moved with compassion, he had movement of bowels towards the people and he healed them of all their diseases. That same one is inside you. The reason why I'm assured that I'll never fail in my life and I'm assured that success is mine is because he's in me. The creator of the heavens and the earth, of all principalities and powers, is inside me. Look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. It's amazing. I'm showing you who Christ is in you. Who is this Christ in you? Who is this Jesus in you? He says he is the image of the invisible God. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. The first one of every creature. He's the image of the invisible God. Look at Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. Let's read from verse 1 so that it makes more sense. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things. Then it says, by whom also he made the world. Next verse. Who being the brightness of his glory. He's the brightness of God's glory. And the express image of his person. And upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the, of the majesty on high. He's the express image of his person. He's the brightness of his glory. He's the effulgence of God's glory. And he's inside me. How can I fail? I fail. Are you seeing? Yeah. yeah. This, this is the, the image. He's the very embodiment of God. Colossians 1.19. Look at Colossians. Go back to that place. 1.19 now. For it pleased the Father that in Jesus should all fullness dwell. All fullness dwells in him. Let's read the Amplified of this. It's nice. For it has pleased the Father that all the divine fullness, the sum total of the divine perfection, powers, and attributes should dwell in him permanently. Where is he? With all of this. He's inside me. Can you imagine? That the sum total of the divine perfection, powers, and attributes 
are in Christ and is in me with all of this. So in chapter 2 verse 9, look at chapter 2 verse 9. He says a similar thing there. And ropes us in. For in him, for in Christ, the whole fullness of deity that God had continued to do out in bodily form, giving complete expression of the divine nature. Have you seen it? That's why we can display God. Because he is in us. Christ is in us. He's a, he, every, the divine God, the, the God, the deity, continues to dwell in bodily form, giving complete expression of the divine nature. And you are in him. Made full. And having come to fullness of life in Christ, you too are filled with the Godhead. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And reach full spiritual stature. Can you imagine? Then it says, and he's the head of all rule and authority of angelic principality and power. He's in you. He's the head of all principalities and powers. He's the head and he's inside you. Meaning that no devil heart out of hell can touch you. Why? Because the one who is the head of all principality and powers is inside you. Go back. Go to chapter 1. Verse, we, we just read verse 15. Let's read verse 16. You'll see some more there. Look at it. Colossians chapter 1 verse 16. King James please. For by him were all things created. Can you imagine? The one by whom all things were created. That are in heaven and that are in earth. Visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers or things were all things were created by him and for him. Where is he? John chapter 1, verse 3. Let's read John 1, 1 to 3. You'll see it. I'm showing you who this Jesus is in you. What a Jesus there? What a Jesus? This Jesus is inside you. How can you feel? Also, how can you feel? It's not possible. It's not possible. No matter how hard you try, you can't fail. It's impossible. Do you know why? Because Christ is in you. It's when I said that I didn't understand what I was saying much. The understanding I have now is higher than what I understood at that time. Yet we produce results. Oh, it's way higher. What the understanding I have is way higher. I will be saying the same things, but the understanding is on another level. The assurance is so much. I tell you. I tell you. Strong. The update is very strong. It's the same software, but updated. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't know what I was saying at that time. I tell you. I, didn't, I had no idea what I was saying. Yeah. Maybe five years from now, I will still say I didn't have any idea of what I was saying now. Because that software that will come will be higher than this one. And that's what God wants for you. That's the desire of God for your life. That you be firmly fixed in that knowledge that Christ is in you. Christ is in you. Christ is in me. Christ is in me. I can do all things. I can go anywhere. I'll go all around the world. I'll do what God wants me to do. Because Christ is in me. I'm getting bigger and bigger. Because Christ is in me. I'm getting greater and greater. Because Christ is in me. I have wisdom. You see, because Christ is made unto this same... Okay, let me finish it. He says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the... Be- the same was in the beginning with God. Then he says, through him. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. All things. All, including Satan. So Satan, there's nothing in Satan that can stop you. He's the head of what principality and powers. Yeah. The prince of this world cometh and he has nothing in me. The one in, the, in whom the prince of this world had nothing in is sitting inside you. Wow. Satan has not got any hold on you. No demon has out of hell can bind, can bind you. It's not possible. It is not possible. At all. Yeah. For this purpose was the son of man revealed. John, 1 John chapter 3 verse 8. Let's look at the first John chapter 3, verse 8. Are you in the church? Yeah. He that committed sins to the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. This is why he came. And he's sitting inside you with this devil destroying ability. There's nothing, there's no trap the devil can set for you that will touch you. Even if you should fall inside, you will still come up. He says, A righteous man falleth seven times. And rise it. You cannot go down. Say, I cannot go down. 
Listen, be confident about your life. That's why I came. That's what I came to say to you. That is where your glory is. Be confident, knowing who is inside you. The greater one lives inside me. So the songs we sang at the beginning is a summary of what I'm preaching to you. The greater one lives inside me. He created all things. The word that created all things is inside me. Jesus. It's Jesus. We just read uh, Hebrews chapter 1. Look at verse 2. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2. We just read it. Let's read it again. He says, Has in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. By him, he, he made the worlds. By him, he made everything. By Jesus, he made everything. And Jesus is sitting inside you. So brothers and sisters, when you look at your life, be confident of one thing. Glory. Every day glory. Every day joy on speaker that is full of glory. Every day greatness. See, I can, I can never go down. I keep going higher. And higher. And higher. And higher. And higher. And higher. Every day. If there's no job, if you don't have a job, don't worry. He says he wants your heart to be comforted. To be braced up. So that you can start putting to work what is inside you. Start reminding yourself who is inside. Remember, he said, okay, let me read Colossians chapter 2. Verse 2 now, into verse 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that you understand the, the, the context of what he was saying, okay? He says, I pray that their hearts might, I want to see them so that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love and unto full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. It actually means the mystery of God and the Father, which is Christ, okay? There's no mystery, go back. Don't read the Bible like you don't have much wisdom. There's, there's nothing like the mystery of God, the mystery of the Father, and the mystery of Christ. The mystery of God, the Father, is Christ. And the mystery of Christ is the church. Okay? The mystery of God is who? It's Christ. Great without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. Or the mystery of God likeness. God was manifest in flesh. That is Christ. Okay? Uh -huh. So NLT says, it says, I want them to be encouraged, blah, 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 that they may know that they understand God's... Okay, let me read it well. I want them to be encouraged and knit together by strong ties of love. I want them to have complete confidence that they understand God's mysterious plan, which is Christ himself. Let's continue reading in NLT so we don't get confused. Next verse. In whom, in Christ, are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Meaning that all that you need in life is inside. Is inside. He says that Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, he says, But of him are ye in Christ, who of God is made unto us. Christ is made unto us, what? Wisdom. So, he is the embodiment of all wisdom. The, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in him. And he is in us. And has been made wisdom unto us. How can you make foolish decisions? You cannot but choose right. All you need to do is to remember who is inside you. As you make that choice, you make that choice. Say that Christ is in me. Therefore, I make the right choice. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You cannot miss out on the right husband. You cannot miss out on the right wife. You cannot miss out on your way. Yeah. Why? Because Christ is in you. He wants you to refer continuously to the one who is inside you. It's so important to him. That is what the New Testament is about. He wants you to refer confidently of who is in you. And concentrate on who is in you. Know who is in you. And hence move in life with confidence and with boldness. Go back to that place. Colossians chapter 3 verse 2 verse 3. It says, in him lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Next verse. It says, I am telling you this. So, I'm telling you this. So no one will deceive you with well-crafted arguments. I'm telling you this so that nobody nobody will be able to deceive you with well-crafted arguments. All the arguments they can have Okay, cannot be compared to Christ in you with wisdom and knowledge. 
with all wisdom and knowledge is inside you. Yeah. That cannot be, whatever they can say, cannot be compared to Christ who is inside you. Since I'm saying this to you so that no one will deceive you with well-crafted arguments. Yeah. Let you think that, oh, there's something else somewhere. You need to worship the stars and worship the moon. Yeah. And pour libation on here and then do that and do this. Yeah. If only you can take this equipment and throw it somewhere and do this. Something good will happen. Something powerful will happen. No, my good in life is dependent on my knowledge of Christ in me. Yeah. Not in me doing things. If only you can take the sun from your house, in front of your house, and throw it to the east, you will prosper. Tell them my prosperity is not in that. My prosperity is in my confident assurance of who is inside me. For you know the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you through his poverty might be rich. Might be rich. So your riches is not dependent on you taking sun and throwing it to the east. Or living in the east. Someone said you need to live in the east before you can prosper. Such nonsense. Which part is east enough to be able to prosper? <laughs> I'm saying this to you so that no one will deceive you. No one will deceive you with arguments, well-crafted arguments. Your development, your healing, and your health is not dependent on you going to lie somewhere and taking some leaps and looking at them in a certain way. It's not in you praying under a tree. Someone said people's prayers are not working because they are praying in sealed houses. They are praying in, in, in block houses. They need to pray under trees so that their prayer can go towards such nonsense such nonsense and you have people children of god going to stand on the trees to pray so that god can hear their prayer where is god where is god where is god why is he why is he he's inside you he is inside you he hears my prayers whether i'm in the bathroom in the swimming pool at the toilet makes no difference where i am he hears me he hears me tell anybody he hears me let me show you a scripture. Go to John chapter 5. It says, I don't want you to be deceived by anybody. John chapter 15. Let's read verse 23. Oh, hallelujah. Lero hosa. Malo hoshe. Manda kaze seste. Don't be deceived. Tell me, but don't be deceived. Let's read John chapter 16, verse 22, rather, into 23. Okay? It's in 23, but... Let's read it, 16 to 20, 16, 22. It says, and you now, you now therefore have sorrow. This is Jesus talking to the disciples because he was leaving. He was telling them, I'm leaving. He says, you have sorrow, but I'll see you again. When I die and I come back from the dead, I'll see you again. And when I see you again, your heart shall rejoice. And your joy no man taketh from you. That's why Peter said that you have not seen Jesus before. But you rejoice with joy unspeakable that is full of glory. You've not seen him before, but you love him. And rejoice with joy unspeakable. That is full of glory. That's what Jesus said. He says, your joy, no man taketh from you. Next verse, verse 23. He says, and in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, whatever you, got, you shall ask my, my Father in my name, under a tree. <laughs> under a chair. <laughs> in the east. <laughs> No, he didn't say that. Hey, that would be too complex. What about those in Dubai? <laughs> Where there are not much trees. What are they going to do? He says, what's why you shall ask the father in my name? He will give it to you. Next verse. Next verse. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Then he says, ask and you shall receive. So that your joy may be made full. Wow. wow. Can you imagine? God wants your joy to be made full. What a God. What a loving God. Next verse. Next verse. 25. Says, These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. Next verse. At that day you shall ask him, you shall ask him my name. And I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. This, I'm, not going, I'm not going to ask the Father for you. In these days, I'm not going to ask the Father for you. You are going to pray in my name and the Father is going to give it to you. Why? Because, next verse, for the Father himself loveth you. 
Why? Because you have loved me. And I believe that I came out from God. Do you believe that he came from, from yeah. God? Do you love him? Yeah. He says the father loves you. The father loves you. He answers your prayers. Behold, what man of love the father has bestowed upon us. That we should be called the sons of God. Say the father himself loves me. Yeah. So he says, I don't want anybody to deceive you with any other thing. Christ, is in, Christ in you is enough. You think it's nothing? Try it. Start praying with tr- the consciousness of Christ inside you. Start praying. Like that. Let me tell you an experience I had not long ago. For a whole month or two, I was stuck up in this knowledge. That was all I was thinking about. When I prayed, I prayed with that in mind. All the time. You know? One day I was lying in bed. When I'm, when I'm, I'm lying in bed, I'm sleeping, I pray in tongues to sleep. Do you see? Uh, I do my best to always do that. To pray in tongues, to sleep. So this day I was praying in tongues and I went into sleep. After about five hours, I came out of sleep, prayed. As I was praying, I went to sleep again. When I opened my eyes, I was off my bed. Yes. I was off my I don't know whether my spirit came out of my body or my body went. Because I, I went and I saw my wife lying on the bed. And I was off the bed. And I was going into the ceiling. And I said, it's okay, come back. I want to come back. <laughs> and I came back into my body. Now, that experience did not come to me. I did not have that experience by thinking that God is somewhere. And I'm praying to try to catch God. To try and seek God. No. I was thinking about Christ, who Christ is in me. Yeah, that is where the power is. The power is in that. The power is in that. Don't let anybody deceive you and let you think something else. No. Don't let anybody think. Don't let anyone say any other thing to you. That's the truth. I heard Pastor Chris say he levitated. I was wondering what what he did. And as I was listening, I heard that this is what he did. I was not trying to do it to to levitate or anything. I was just, I just loved God. And I still love God. And was concentrating on him in me. How much he loves me. And how much he enjoys me. And enjoys my presence. That was all I was doing. And I left off. This happened to me somewhere about two months ago. I came out of my bed like that. And I was wondering what is going on. What is happening? What is happening? And when I said I want to come back down, I came back nicely into the bed. Yeah. Then I, I, I was like, hey. I was wondering whether I was dreaming or what was happening. Yeah, that's where the power is. Not, oh God, I don't know when are you going to show yourself to me? When are you going to talk to me? Come and feel me. He's always inside you. He's been in you all this while. If you don't go with me, I'll not go. When you went, he was going in you. He says, I don't want anyone to deceive you. Tell me, but don't let anyone deceive you. That is where the power is. Yeah. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in him. He is made unto us wisdom. Righteousness. Your sanctification. He is your sanctification. Yeah. He is your righteousness. He is your redemption. He is your redemption. As long as you live, he lives. Your redemption is valid. And he ever liveth. Jesus ever liveth. He doesn't die. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next verse, verse 5. I'm closing. For though I'm far away from you, my heart is with you. And I rejoice that you are living as you should. And that your faith in Christ is strong. Let's read the Amplified of this. It's nice. You'd be surprised at what he's expecting. Out of every child of God. He says, For though I am away from you in body, yet I am with you in spirit, delighted at the sight of your standing shoulder to shoulder in such orderly array, and the firmness and the solid front and steadfastness of your faith in Christ. That's leaning of the entire human personality on him. On who? On Christ. Not on something else. On Christ. 
in absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness. Where? Inside you. Next verse. Let's keep reading in the Amplified. It's nice. Maybe you should continue reading for yourself. As you have therefore received Christ, even Jesus the Lord, so walk, regulate your lives, and conduct yourselves in union with and conformity to him. That's how he wants you to live. He says, live your life in union with him. That's what Paul said in Galatians 2.20. As for me, as crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I live by his faith now. Not by my faith, but by his faith. What was his faith? His faith was that when he dies and rises again, he will be in me and continue his life in me. That is the faith of the Son of God. So I live by his faith. He's living in me. He's showing up in me. Wherever I go. You see, when you are praying for the sick, don't even have any, don't put any effort on, your, on yourself. Don't worry yourself. When you lay hands on the person, know that Jesus is the one who has laid hands on him. Jesus, Jesus' hands never fails. He healed them with his word. As you speak, know that it's Jesus who's speaking. This has nothing to do with whether, whether you're a pastor or not. He didn't say pastors. He said everybody. So it's for everybody. Say it's for everybody. It's for everybody. Say, my success is assured. My success is assured. Say, that, say it like you believe it. My success is assured. So where are you going to be in the next two years? How is your life going to be? Even if you have one sitting in your pocket today. Hmm? It's multiplying. Why? Because Christ is in you. This Jesus. This all powerful Jesus. Let's read Philippians 2 and now stop, okay? Philippians 2, let's read from verse 4. No, you're tired. I mean, it's been a long. It's been a long night. I think you've heard so many things, isn't it? Are you not tired? Have you been blessed? Are you glad you came? Yeah. You came with so much expectation. Yeah. You came with so much expectation. You know, and God knew expectation. And he prepared to meet your expectation. And I know he has met your expectation. From verse 4, please. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So he's going to talk to you about Jesus. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Meaning that he humbled himself, right? He says, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. He's inside you with his humility. So I can only be humble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, I can only be humble. Only be humble. Pride is not a part of my life. Because Christ in me is full of humility. Therefore, he lives his humble life through me. Next verse. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Next verse. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father hallelujah this Jesus who has been exalted and given a name that is higher than every other name is the one who is living inside you he's living inside you with the authority of his name so when you say in Jesus name this should happen know that something happens don't think you are just talking when you say this is happening in Jesus name that's exactly what is going to happen Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say he's in, in me. With all of his strength. With all of his, strength, with all of his power. power. You see? It is the glory. It is the, it's called the glory of the ministration of righteousness. Glory. That is higher 